Sorry, I'm all out of funny cold opens for now. Maybe my February break will recharge my brain batteries and help me think of a crop of good ones for you. Stay tuned. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, yes, I am just barely getting my January bargain bag in under the wire right before the very, very end of January. Sorry it's so late, but, well, I, I don't know. How did year-end bleed into the middle of January? Somebody answer that for me, huh? Anyway, that's why Bargain Bag is late for January. But yes, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of a mystery CD grab bag. Uh, assembled from the bargain section at Epic Seconds, a store in downtown Eugene. And uh, yes, eight CDs in that bag that uh, I don't know what's in them uh, until I open them right here on camera. Uh, before I open that bag, however, I will go over, uh, break down the contents of last month's bargain bag in rough order from castoffs to keepers and see if there are any good treasures in there. I was about to say that uh, this last month was kind of a down a downer, but actually it turns out that I'm keeping more than half the CDs. So uh, it's just different kinds of good music, I guess, this time. I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in just a second as, as I go ahead and, as I said, break down my last month's bargain bag in rough order from Cast Off to Keepers. Here we go. Uh, the first one is Maxwell. He is an R&B singer. This is his sophomore album, I believe. Embrya is the name of it. Yeah. Embrya. Uh... It's okay, you know. It's it's R and B, nothing really. Well, it's it's kind of it's more chill R and B than your average R and B, I guess, if that means anything. So, uh, but yeah, I just kind of it didn't really grab my ears. Uh, come to think of it, even though I had it first in my castoffs, you know, I talked about it first. I don't know. I might give it one more listen, but these next two are actually going to be castoffs. Definitely a couple of country albums by. Perfectly decent artists. They just didn't do anything for me, the albums themselves. Uh, Kathy Matea, uh, Lonesome Standard Time. That's a good name for an album, and uh, that was a pretty good song on there. And uh, Reba McIntyre, her album, It's Your Call. Yeah, I, I, I like Reba plenty. I mean, I've got a couple, three or four of her CDs. This one just didn't quite do anything for me, So, and neither did Kathy Matea's. Uh, yeah. Of course, maybe it was because I was kind of crunched with all the other stuff during January. I might, I will probably at some point, uh, especially since I'm taking most of February off of YouTube, just to warn you, uh, ex with, you know, with the exception of my February bargain bag coming up. Uh, so maybe I will make myself the time to re-listen to the cast-offs just to see. And if I change my mind on any of them, I will let you know in my February bargain bag. So does that sound like a good deal? Okay. And now we're on to, actually, the Keepers, five of them. Uh, first off, we have Al Hurt. He is a jazz trumpeter and a very good one. Uh, when I, It was funny because when I first started listening to this, it was kind of, okay, yeah, whatever. I've got several albums by Herb Alpert, who's a really good jazz trumpeter. Do I really need another one? But as the album went on, as the CD went on, it kind of charmed me. I mean, lots, lots of interesting, interesting stuff. Um, there's a song called Alley Cat, which is a classic jazz, piano jazz song, traditionally done with piano, and he does it with the, uh, what do you call it? He, he kind of, he does that along with a, uh, the little muting thing, you know, the, the wah, wah, wah kind of, uh, thing, a poor approximation of the sound, but you get my, you get what I mean. Uh, but he, yeah, he does it kind of, it makes it kind of a funny take on Alley Cat, Listen to the Al Hurt version of Alley Cat, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, and also listen to the original version of Alley Cat uh, by uh, Bent Fabric. So good stuff. And, uh, you know, lots of other stuff, uh, stuff on here. Stranger in Paradise and uh, Out of Nowhere, a jazz tune that was actually on uh, Seth MacFarlane's album. I pointed that out in my Albums of the Year thing. So, so yeah. And The Girl from Ipanema, a classic jazz tune. But, yeah. Plenty of good stuff on here that it kind of charmed me, I will admit. And another instrumental... Actually, most of the stuff in my keepers is instrumental, oddly enough. That's what makes it kind of an odd month, as I mentioned. Instrumental Magic. From the... It's Mystic Music Presents Instrumental Magic. And this is actually a two-disc set. Uh, that's the track listing for disc one. And they actually... 
as I tend to do sometimes is I uh, co uh, compact shelf space by putting what would have been two different two individual jewel cases into one jewel case and this guy put the second uh, back page on the inside of the uh, tray there so you can see this it's got a lot of movie and TV themes on this one uh, as a bit of a change of pace you know it usually just has kind of you know the in, the um, easy listening instrumental stuff that's on all the other compilations but uh, this is good and, and it has the original artists it's not sound -alex. most of the stuff is the original artists there are a couple of things uh, which I can't remember right now but you've got dueling banjos which was from deliverance on here and the good the bad and the ugly the theme from the movie the western and the magnificent seven the theme from that and you've also got some uh uh, the Rockford Files, the uh, TV theme from Rockford Files, and Dynasty. That's that's the one that's kind of the sound alike. This is the version of Dynasty that's on here is not the original uh, TV theme. And uh, Classical Gas, the classic Mason Williams song, Chariots of Fire by Vangelis. It's just, you know, so you, as you can see what I mean. It's got a lot of stuff, and uh, the theme from Star Wars. It's got the you know the actual original recording of the Star Wars uh, Episode Four theme. And you've got, oh, the theme from L.A. Law and St. Elsewhere, Hill Street Blues, Miami Vice. So, yeah, I'm keeping this one. And I've got another one that's kind of like this. I can't remember if it's a Mystic Music uh, brand compilation, but it's called Instrumental Gold. And if I remember correctly, that was, I inherited that from my sister and brother-in-law's collection. And at first I was thinking, okay, I'll get rid of that one and keep this one. But the tra track listings are different enough. I'm going to keep both of them. My music tastes can be a little weird sometimes, I will admit. And then this next one, uh, I, I think I revealed when I opened this, when I unbagged this one, I said it was pretty much going to be a keeper right off the bat, and it is. Uh, In the Garden by Eric Tingstad and Nancy Rumble. They are a New Age uh, duo who had been, I've got three or four other albums previous to this one, and so I've been, I was a fan coming into, you know, seeing this in the bargain bag. Uh, only problem is... The booklet and this was kind of funny when i was getting ready to leave for portland i was thinking oh there was a cd one cd that i had that i recently got the booklet was completely uh if i can even get it out of here this time that's maybe not be happy no here it is the booklet was completely water damaged and basically glued together so you see you can't even well in in the uh you can open it up down the middle, but yeah, the individual pages are stuck together with water damage. So anyway, I was going to, oh, I need to make a note of what that CD was so I can look for it while I was in Portland. Couldn't find it, couldn't remember what it was. And then, of course, as I'm doing my bargain bag, just a few days after I get back from Portland, of course, I realize which CD it was. So I'll just keep an eye on, uh, keep a lookout for the uh, another cleaner version of it. But the disc is, is in pretty good shape. It's just the booklet that's ruined. But anyway, uh, yeah, Nancy Rumble is a woodwinds uh, artist. You know, she does flute and probably clarinet and things like that. And Eric Tingstead is a guitarist. So they they make they make beautiful music together, even though they're not married. They're they were just uh, partners in a professional sense. But uh, yeah, and they continue their tradition of. Nice, mellow, new age, instrumental stuff. Just relax, relaxing music. That's what I really mean to say. Anyway. <laughs> it, it's the morning, and I'm usually... Uh, the, the caffeine hasn't really started working yet, so uh, forgive me. And then on to the last two keepers. Uh, this one goes pretty much as far as you can go from uh, new age, quiet, uh, relaxing music. We got some blues rock here. Coverdale Page. Uh, I had never checked out this album before. It's, this was uh, probably one of the best sellers from back in its day. Was it 1990? 1993. And of course, I, I know who Coverdale and Page are, but the b brain is just uh, not... Oh, Jimmy Page, I think, for, with Led Zeppelin. Am I, am I correct in that? Anyway, I can't remember who Coverdale is uh, and where, what band he's from, but anyway... Most, a lot of you people out there probably are familiar with this. But yeah, very good blues rock. Uh, lots of fun stuff on here. So uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this one. And uh, yeah, that's about all I can say about that one. And the 
pretty much the winner winner chicken dinner for this one. Uh, it, it could go between a couple of them. We've got uh, Mark Knopfler and Chet Atkins, two legendary guitar virtuosos. Virtuosos? Virtuosa? Is that the plural? I don't know. Anyway, uh, with their album Neck and Neck. You gotta love albums whose titles are, gu are guitar puns. Anyway, very, very good stuff, as you would expect from two guitar masters. Uh, they do uh, a version of the jazz tune Yakety Sax. Uh, their version they call Yakety Axe, of course. And uh, lots of other good stuff. Some uh, folk tunes, some blues tunes, and some a little bit of country in there, too. So, yeah, very, very enjoyable. If you happen to see this one and you like uh, guitar music in general, pick it up. It, it's making me want to uh, delve a little bit more into Mark Knopfler stuff. I think... Yeah, this is the only Mark Knopfler... Do I have a Dire Straits? I have a Dire Straits compilation, I think. Yes, I do. Uh, but yeah, aside from a Greatest Hits of Dire Straits, this is the only Mark Knopfler CD I have. So, so there you have it with the cast-offs. And let me take a an iced tea break. This is the aforementioned caffeine that I'm waiting to kick in. Okay. Now... Let's go ahead and pop this bag open. And I did this once before. I cut the tape on the wrong side. I need to cut it there because it's folded that way. Cutting it on the right side helps. Anyway. Now, there are two CDs. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know the story, I will explain it briefly. Uh, I assembled these bags myself when the what's normally the one dollar CD section was on sale for four for a dollar. So I figured, uh, you know, I was done with bargain bag at the time, but I figured if I can get a bunch of CDs that I might be interested in listening to, four for a dollar, you know, twenty five cents a piece. I'm going to go ahead and do it, and so I assembled two years worth of bargain bags, eight CDs in a bag instead of seven like they were before. Uh, so. I know what was in there. I, I don't have an eidetic or photographic memory, so I don't remember what's in which bag. But there are a couple of CDs that I remember picking up for uh, assembling these bags that I haven't found yet. And one of them is uh, Play by Moby. I have I have Moby's 18. And the other one is the soundtrack from Schindler's List. So let's see if either of those two are in here. Otherwise, I will be pleasantly surprised, sort of. Even though I, as I said, I technically I know what's in here, but I really don't. So let's see here. Oh, cool. I was just about to pick this up at House of Records. Uh, Orchard. Liz Wright is a jazz singer. Uh, kind of, kind of R&B-ish jazz. And this is her third album, The Orchard. I have her first two. And so, yay. Awesome. That one's probably going to be a keeper. Maybe, unless it's Unless it is significantly worse than her first two albums. So I can't imagine not wanting to keep that. So, excellent. Next up we have Adam Pascal, or Pascal, uh, Model Prisoner. I have no idea. Copyright 2000, Shkaboom Records. Yeah, that's what it is. If you can read it down at the bottom there, Shkaboom Records. So I have nothing to say on that one because I don't know who he is. Most of these I have at least heard of the artist. That's why I picked them out personally. But some of them, I'm trying for the heck of it. What do we have here? Oh, Dar Williams. Now, she is a country folk singer who I had heard one song of hers quite a while ago, and I cannot remember what, what song it was now, and kind of like the sound of it. So uh, she's always been... It, that name is just always, for some reason, had a, occupied a little tiny corner of my brain. So what the heck, give her a try. Then we have, oh, Duncan Shake. Uh, Whisper House, this is, I'm not sure which, you know, which album it is in his discography, you know, third, fourth, fifth, I don't know. But I do have a couple of Duncan Shake albums that I picked up in Oklahoma, I believe. At least one of them I picked up in Oklahoma. Yeah, he's a uh, pop folk singer-songwriter, so we'll give him a try. And then we have 
Oh. Believe, Magical Holidays, Volume 3. Oh, I can see why I picked this one up. The uh, uh, artist lineup on here. Celine Dion, uh, Gloria Estefan, NSYNC, Keb Mo, uh, 98 Degrees, Destiny's Child, Luther Vandross. So, what the heck? And I will probably... Yeah, I will probably hold this over until the uh, holidays uh, after Thanksgiving when I start listening to Christmas music. And then we have... Oh, Paul Jackson. A River in the Desert. Oh, Paul Jackson Jr., excuse me. Uh, I'm guessing R&B? Uh, perhaps R&B Gospel? Oh, it's jazz. As you can see on the label there, the Atlantic Jazz label. Duh. Anyway, always up for some jazz. And then two C's left we have. Oh, Vince Gill. Uh, let's make sure we kiss goodbye. Uh, Vince Gill is a country artist, so I think I had, I tried one of his albums. Was it also in a bargain bag? And did not think of much of it. It was not a keeper, but uh, who knows. It happens when one artist's al uh, an artist's album doesn't do anything for me, and then another album by the same artist comes along, and I absolutely lo love it. So we'll see. And then the last CD in the bag. <laughs> That's what I tried to do. Uh, here we have... Okay. Red against gray background. That's not good. Jennifer Robin with her album Fish Up a Tree. Interesting title. Um, yeah, I don't know what kind of music this is. I'm going to assume that it's probably... It, uh, I get the folk vibe from her. So we'll see. So anyway, I guess that is it for this batch of Bargain Bag. We'll see how those CDs treat my ears over the coming months. But uh, yes, as I said, uh, I will be taking most pretty much the entire month of February off, except for a bargain bag, because, uh, yeah, January, the, the uh, year-end stuff that uh, bled into mid-January kind of uh, exhausted me a bit. And I also want to take a month, as I mentioned before, um, I'm really going to try to not buy, not spend any money on CDs or records for the entire month of February, because... See this top shelf here? That's my listening backlog for vinyl. And uh, since I came back from Portland and bought a bunch of CDs, my listening backlog for CDs is almost as bad. So <clears throat> in addition to trying not to buy any uh, records or CDs during February, I think I'm going to try to make a commitment to listen to at least one record and or CD per day, per night, uh, in uh, through the month of February. And I think I'm going to... Uh, do it as kind of a journal, you know, I'm going to vlog it, but do it, you know, upload it in one video, like kind of like a digest format at the end of the month. So we'll see. Or at the beginning of March. And uh, I'll, so yeah, I will let you know how this uh, no by February month goes. It's going to be a heck of a challenge, but we'll find out. Anyway, that'll do it for Bargain Bag for January 2020, 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, Life's too short to be a music snob.